Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordeaux. We are the founders of Journey Coaching. We're super passionate about all things coaching and want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training over a thousand life coaches. Dive deep into a more meaningful career, find freedom, and make an impact on the world around you. Hey guys, on today's episode, we're talking about the art of holding space. Holding space is an art, and it's something that we teach in our intensive at Journey Coaching. Noelle, let's talk about this art. Yes, and before we dive in, because I've been, you know, on the war path about different little patterns of language popping up all over the place. Have you happened to notice that the term "holding space" has become a buzzword in the yeah. last year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, I I first came upon this word in grad school and no one knew what that meant. Like, what do you mean by holding space? And now it's just, it's just common language. Do you think it's a good thing or, or, or what do you, or do you think that it's um, that term is being distorted because it's commercialized? Well, you know, for, for coaches, it's part of our technique. It's part of our practice. It's part of literally how we facilitate our craft. And I think it's, um, I think it's a wonderful practice. And I think it's a wonderful term where I get all of my feathers ruffled is when terms are taken out of context yeah. with, yeah. uh, without explanation, uh, proper citing, proper sourcing, and just kind of slapped on and applied to situations where folks m- might not have a clear understanding of what that means. Yeah. So there's a lot of this happening in the wellness field. Um, terms like doing the work, the word trigger, there's a lot of stuff happening, trauma bonds. There's a lot of stuff happening where people are um, I mean, it starts off as a, an interesting word to explore and how, you know, how it affects us. And then people kind of turn it into a T-shirt and they start using it in ways that it kind of doesn't make sense. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's, you know, it, uh, for for me, it's going to be like, nope, sorry, I can't right now. I'm holding space, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just out here holding right. space. Um, but, you know, truly, it's it's a really fantastic concept. And I'm excited to explore it, especially in the context context of coaching because um, it relates to so much of our work as coaches. And, you know, holding space is not a singular act. It's really, really multifaceted. Yeah. And for coaches, when we are able to effectively hold space in different ways, that is uh, what often enables our clients to really grab onto their own turning points of change. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, holding spaces, I mean, I would say it's a first step of, of, I mean, in any relationship, but especially uh, with your, with your client holding spaces is is, um, ground zero. It's foundational. It is foundational. And a lot of times when we think about ourselves as humans, as individuals in the context of work, we have an active association. So for coaches, that would mean run, physically running coaching models, mm-hmm. running questioning techniques, running strategies. But truly where coaching lives is in the environment that is created between coach and client where the client has the experience of being fully seen, held, validated, and believed by another competent and trusted adult. Yeah, that's um, that's it's a lot. It's there's a lot happening when you are holding space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so let's let's get into it. The quote unquote space that coaches hold it isn't necessarily a physical space. It can be a moment, it can be mental, it can be emotional or psychological, or it can be energetic. Yeah, I love that you added energetic because it's it's something that we uh, may not think about when we're, t- when we're talking about holding space, uh, you know, our, being responsible of our own energy, checking in with the energy in the room. Yeah, and also I would add to that, 
giving yourself permission as a coach to rely on your senses, to rely mm. on your intuition, to listen with your whole being as you right. are uniquely capable of doing. If you get tingles, you get tingles. That's really vital information, both for you and your client. Yeah. And there's a lot of um, online uh, Zoom coaching happening, obviously, just because of, you know, the explosion of Zoom and the pandemic and everyone being at home. Um, and But even on uh, the computer, whether it's FaceTime or Zoom, whatever you're doing, um, your energy is felt. You know, just because you're behind a uh, webcam doesn't mean that they can't notice your energy and you can't notice theirs. Oh, yeah. I only work by phone. Right. And the space the 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 way that invisibility functions for me in my own coaching practice is what truly allows for that transcendent experience yeah and so when i coach um i now i used to do all webcam now i do mostly phone like you and i purposely walk and talk and that walking it produces a different energy that works for me instead mm -hmm. of uh, sitting in one space yeah Absolutely. Yeah. So let's break it down. Let's start with, um, with, with mental space. And this, this is for the client, you know, and, and that's one of the aspects of coaching that takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of undoing is as coaches, again, attached to this notion of performance and active working. Um, when the client occupies the space of the session, that mm -hmm. client is expressing, reflecting, um, and it's our job as a coach to to hold um, the space for our clients to think out loud, right, and to not necessarily do much except validate that expression. Which, by the way, is hard. It's harder to hold. It's easier to grab, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, going in there neutral, non non judgmental, not not putting your shoes onto the client, all of that stuff. Um, that's hard work. That you have to be actively doing that, or or naturally you won't be. Yes, and part and parcel of the the process of coaching is allowing your clients to have again space for quiet moments of reflection. Mm -hmm. where the wheels in their brain are turning and they are reviewing, evaluating, reconsidering something, processing a past moment, bringing up a memory or applying new information. Um, that's not done verbally. Yeah. And you know, what's hard is when you're coaching someone, you as a coach feel like you should be talking all the time. Or that if someone says something like like any kind of like silence is, you know, you not doing your job. And so um, you have to be comfortable with silences and, and giving them space to process or give them their time. Silence and holding silence is one of the toughest coaching yeah. skills to develop. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have to be confident as a coach to provide that. Mm -hmm. it, and it's once you get the hang of it, it's really beautiful. So, mm -hmm. you know, another aspect of supporting your clients in terms of mental space is, is transformation. And this happens when somebody has the, the time and the opportunity to make a fundamental shift in their perspective. And boom, like that is one of the major outcomes of coaching. This isn't just heightened awareness, but actual new connections that are being formed due to insights and that motivate the client to change, to literally change, to make a different choice, mm -hmm. to do something differently in their own singular precious life. If you're like me and you talk a lot and you bird walk and you're scrambling, um, this is, it's really important for you to um, work on that. So uh, the silences are, um, their, their value, they're in there, they're inserted into your, your coaching. And it's not just one long run on sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's good to think of an 80, 20 rule where you would like your client to be speaking 80% of the time. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I'm here, John. 
All right. <laughs> I'm here to support you <laughs> in, in your coaching journey. Yes. Um, are those your chickens in the background? Uh, I, we, I, we have chickens and we have parrots. Um, so oh, my. If you, yeah. Um, if you if it sounds like people are screaming, those are parrots. And then um, when, any kind of what? chuckling is chickens. Where when did the parrots arrive? No, the parents are the parrot. The parrots are not mine. They live up in the trees. Uh, there's a uh, myth. There's a myth that thousands of parrots um, uh, were f f not thousands, probably a uh, hundred or so, out of a, either a zoo or a pet store back in the '60s from a fire, and now they have nested um, right right next door to me in Altadena. So there's parrots. They're ginormous green parrots. It's so weird coming outside. You just see like parrots flying right above your head. But there's parrots everywhere here. I love that. That's a beautiful visual. That's a beautiful yeah. visual. Yeah, um, I actually I enjoy it. Yeah. And and what a great example of me just sitting silently, listening intently to the description of the parrots in the trees, oh, you know. Um, that's Noel holding, holding that, space. Holding yeah. that space. Yeah. So let's move into new territory here, which is, again, kind of relating to silence and the work of a coach to undo your own relationship with performance. And that is the space that we hold for um, emotions and psychological processing for our mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. And there is a really specific uh, competency associated with this. It's not an accident. The ICF core competency is, is literally called creating trust and safety mm. because it specifically relates to the way that as coaches, we hold and enact an ethical practice that allows us to be sensitive to our client's identity, environment, experiences, values, and beliefs. And when we do that effectively as coaches, our clients are able to open up in psychologically safe ways that allow them to be vulnerable, to build connections, to clear and vent, and to really get to the work of what they're there to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that ICF has this. Uh, and I, I love how blunt it is, creating trust and safety. Yeah, it's yeah. straight up. And 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 there's, you know, there's there's very this is why coach training is important because there's very specific methodology to this stuff. And it, you know, for for untrained practitioners, I think one of the trickiest things or where untrained coaches can really cause harm is not understanding how to allow for or deal with strong emotions. Mhm. Mm and, you know, this is also why as you uh, uh, train for a coach, the, the tools that you acquire, they're, they're, they're so valuable um, because this is applied to any relationship. You know, tra uh, creating trust and safety is, is going to be um, helpful in, in, with your parents, with your partner, with your friends. I mean, all across the board, just in your life. Yeah. Uh, an example from my own experience in coaching um, is when I was in coach training, I remember one of the trainers saying specifically along the lines of, you know, preparing yourself for strong emotions. And one of my classmates said, ah, oh, well, you know, what's the worst thing that can, you know, really come up? And, and the trainer said, you know, be prepared for anything. And then used an example of uh, feelings of regret or resentment that mm. when a, a client really finally bursts through to the other side of awareness and they realize maybe for the first time in their entire lives that they wasted potential, wasted time, wasted their youth with limiting beliefs, misconceptions, or cognitive distor distortions, you know, holy shit. Like, that's yeah. big. That's yeah. big stuff. Yeah, of course. And like anything, you know, the only way out is through. Yeah. And so, so when we're holding allowing them, them to feel, allowing your clients to feel, normalizing it, validating it, you know, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Let's talk about it. What do you mm -hmm. need? What are you feeling? Letting your clients process everything that they're thinking and feeling. Um, and additionally with this, you know, if we're looking at the ICF standards and, and coach training, one of the things that you learn to do as a coach 
is to, from session to session, notice trends in your client's behavior and emotions across sessions to discern themes and patterns so that you can mirror back to your client, hey, you know, it's been a couple of months now. And every time this happens, it seems like you have pretty big feelings. Is there something here that needs to be resolved? Yeah. And that's also um, by doing that, you are bringing the session into the here and now. Yes. You know, noticing the stuff that's happening in the room, I think is very powerful. Yeah. And, you know, that's a great lead into um, to energetic space. Mm. So how would you define the interplay and exchange of energy in a coaching conversation? Oh, man. Um, how would I define it? I think using our own bodies as a radar and um, there, there's so much I think that contributes to the energy, uh, everything from attitude to tone to, you know, body language, posture, you know, how they carry themselves and then also yourself as well. So as you're coaching someone, um, there's an exchange of energy. So it's not like their energy is over there and yours is over here. There's a dance. There's a, there's a mixing happening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on behalf of the coach, one of the things that you learn in coach training is that gaining competence exactly as you described doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a practice to it and it's twofold. It requires self-awareness and, and then the secondary outcome of if you're not doing well, asking for help, resting, engaging in self-care. Um, because working as a coach is a human heavy endeavor and coaches are people too. Coaches have sick days. Coaches can't be non-judgmental all the time. Sometimes your own problem pot is full. And if that is true for you, then you need to pull back a little bit. Right. There are really specific behavioral standards for managing the energetic space of the session. And I think they're really helpful. Um, one that is super important that, that you comes from coach training is the foundational acknowledgement that clients are responsible for their own choices. Mm, yeah. That, that, that there's a boundary in that, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, client, they're their own people They make their own choices and, uh, yes, you're holding space, but you're, you're not, uh, responsible for their choices. No, you can't be. Yeah. And then, you know, secondarily developing a reflective practice to consistently be evaluating yourself as a coach in practice, not just making the assumption, oh, I've got this, but continuing to deepen your learning, ask for feedback, get supervision, um, get more training, and to to really you know move through the levels of professional competency. Mm -hmm. And then another is um, regulating your emotions in session, which is a muscle to yeah. build. Yeah. And that's, you know, not to say don't show up with emotions in session. It is perfectly appropriate to cry with your clients. But if you're, if you experience something that really tips you into anger, um, recognizing when that might be yours and not your clients. Right, right. Being responsible for that. Being responsible for it. And then of course, you know, demonstrating curiosity and really taking into context the influence of of culture and who you are what your lens and what your story is alongside of who your client is what their lens and what their story is mm -hmm. so in conclusion um you know we opened up talking about kind of the commonality of of home holding space as a term that's out there and really specifically uh, in coaching, it's like being the container yourself and creating emptiness so that your clients can fill it with their own resources. Right. Ooh, I love that visual. Well, I yeah. mean, I like the word, I, I like the word container, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. I teach a whole class on it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that, your class is a great one for for this topic and it's yeah. um it's it teaches us how to keep our own judgment our own solutions our own emotional responses outside of the container so that our clients 
can walk around and explore within the space that you're holding and do what they do best, which is, you know, come to their own conclusions and change their own lives. Yeah. If you want to go deeper on the art of holding space, um, I teach one class, but there are many classes uh, at Journey where we go uh, deeper into this, how to do it uh, for clients, but also um, in your own life. And this is um, this has been a game changer for me, uh, holding space, what it looks like to do that. But also, as you learn, you're going to want to be with people who have this ability as well. Yes, yeah. 100%. It's a privilege and an honor to teach. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Be well. No, guys, be well. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to journey.co slash everything to explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a strong community to do it in. We created Journey Coaching to equip you with the tools, training, and community you need to attain your goals. Join Journey Coaching and begin your journey towards personal freedom and a transformative state of growth today. That's J-R-N-I dot C slash everything.